Oh, good evening, Marshal Earth. Hello, Johnny. Where are you heading? Oh, I have an engagement with Miss Marlin this evening. Oh, isn't it a little early? Her show's not over yet. No, no, I'm presenting these flowers to Miss Marlin at the final curtain, and I'm uh, escorting her to a late supper. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, it's too bad about her. What do you mean? I mean, a whole town full of bachelors, and she goes out with you. Some women have no taste in men. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. Starring Hugh O'Brien. Marshal Wyatt Earp struggled to prove that Sheriff John Bean was hand in glove with the Clanton Outlaws and the corrupt 10% ring took a strange new turn when Miss Minna Marlin arrived in Tombstone. Miss Marlin was the star of a dramatic company playing at the Birdcage Theater, but she became the central figure of a real life drama, a drama which had the whole town talking. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Bean, this is delightful. Well, I'm glad you like it. Mm. May I have a vase for your lovely flowers? For you, anything. Well, thank Would you put these flowers in a vase, Miss Marlin, please? Thank you. May I? <laughs> oh, it's a lovely dinner, Mr. Bean. Thank no, you. No, no more champagne, thank you. I must go and study my lines for the play tomorrow night. You know, you work much too hard. Taking a stock company on tour is certainly no job for a lovely woman. On the contrary. I find it very exciting. Oh, you really can't enjoy these Yahoo audiences. I certainly do. They respond with honest emotion. Oh, it's better than those cities like San Francisco. The people are terribly sophisticated. Finish your champagne. I'm afraid we must be going. Well, I don't mind being hurried. You see, I've already fallen in love. Oh, really? That was quick? Oh, it must have happened before. I mean, other men must have fallen in love with you. Not seriously, though. We mustn't forget my flowers. Oh, yes. Miss Marlin, do you think I'm just a poor country sheriff? Poor? I never ask a man how much money he has, Mr. Bean. You know, my salary with fees is about uh, $40,000 a year. Mm, that's a lot. And I collect all the taxes in Cochise County. My share of court costs and fees is around 10000 You are rich. And I'm just getting started politically. You see, I'm trusted and supported by old man Clanton and his people. They like me in Tucson. As a matter of fact, I might even get to be governor of the territory one day. <laughs> you know, telling you things like this isn't very romantic, but... I believe that a woman who's used to luxuries shouldn't sacrifice them. And believe me, Miss Marlin, you won't have to. I'll hold the flowers while you wrap a napkin around the stems, please. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I didn't expect you to commit yourself on such a brief acquaintance, but I had to let you know how I really felt. It's very flattering, Mr. Bean. And you're not angry? Of course not, but we must be going. Uh, Miss Marlin. You will see me again? I'll give it serious thought, Mr. Bean. I should hate myself and you for a loveless marriage. I will not be purchased like a slave girl. I will not join a harem of... of, of I will not be purchased like a slave girl and join a harem of desolate memories. Yes. Oh, uh, one moment. Come in. Thank you. You're very prompt, Marshal. Well, it isn't often that I get such a pleasant summons, Miss Marlin. Most actresses I've met... Well, you, um, you have some information that uh, troubled you? Yes. Would you sit down? Thank you. I had supper last night with your sheriff. It was a most revealing conversation. It uh, might have been the champagne or the fact that he felt he should impress me. But I don't think an officer of the law should brag about his friendship with lawless men. Did you happen to know about his connection with the Clantons, for instance? Well, even the voters know about it. They don't seem to care. 
Well, that's dreadful. Well, it's the politics of this territory. We're still fighting the Civil War. Is Mr. B in a Confederate? No. no. I have too much respect for the Johnny Rebs to call B in or old man Clanton Confederates. You see, Arizona territory was settled primarily by deserters from the Southern Army and outlaw renegades. I didn't know that. Well, there's no reason why you should. It's my job to know, and it's my job to try and clean up Arizona. Sheriff Bean chose the other side. Well, I don't know what to do about him. He says he's in love with me and that he wants to marry me. I never heard of Bean offering marriage before. He did. He even told me his wedding gift. It's going to be the profit from a big shipment of silver ore. $50,000 worth. It's very embarrassing. After what he's told me about himself, I foolishly promised to see him again tonight. Of course, I'll have to break the appointment. I didn't like him very much, but I, I had no reason to refuse him. I'm sorry, Marshal. I, I shouldn't make this your concern. I'll be a very willing volunteer. Volunteer? Miss Marlin, I'd be very proud to take you to supper tonight myself. Oh. Oh, well, I... I guess I better tell you the truth. The truth? I used Mr. Bean to try to interest you. Oh, I know it's terribly feminine and disgusting. Well, it uh, is feminine, but I like it. A woman shouldn't chase after a man. We're well, not doing that. I just think that you want me to help you get rid of Bean. And as uh, long as the truth is being told, I better toss in my share. I don't like Bean much either. He considers himself quite a ladies' man. And if you took me away from him, he'd be considered a laughing stock. Well, that's part of it. What's the other part? Well, the other part is that I've been watching you from the back of the theater every night. And Mr. Bean had nothing to do about that. Why, thank you, Marshal. It's uh, true that there is bad blood between me and the sheriff, but you shouldn't concern yourself about it. You'll just be in Tombstone another week, and that'll be just another booking on your tour. I doubt that. Well, uh, supper tonight, then, after the show? Tonight. Tonight. Good evening, Miss Marlin. Oh, Mr. Bean, didn't you get my message? No, I didn't. Even Jenny. Even Marshal. Uh, I'm sorry, I. Mr. Earp has invited me for supper. I sent you a note. I see. I am sorry, Mr. Bean. Good night. Good night. Quiet or beat your time. Oh, shut up. Old man Clanton wants to see you, Sheriff, right away. Later. He said right now. Two for you, two for me. What's the idea, Mr. Clanton? Sit on the sofa. We're busy. I'm not one of your hired hands, Mr. Clanton. I happen to be the Sheriff of Cochise County. If you think you're going to push me around, you're mistaken. Shut up. I'll bet 50. Well, I got a full house king high. That does mean. Any of you boys do any better? Well, my pot. Hmm, it's a good one, too. Looks like you boys still got a little bit to learn about poker. Now we'll take care of Mr. B and bring him over here. What'd you tell that actress gal about what we got planned? Nothing. Why would I do a thing like that? Last night, the waiter at the American Hotel heard you bragging to her about how much money you made. Then in the lobby, it was heard to say he collected taxes from some ranchers, let others off without paying. You denying you said that? I guess I had too much champagne. Champagne? What you need's a good pistol whipping. Shall we take him outside, boss? Not this time. Being I don't care about you strutting and bragging on what a big man you are, as long as it's about things that everybody already knows. 
But you keep away from that Minna Marlin. There's some plans I ain't anxious for nobody to hear about, you hear me? Yes, sir, but I didn't say... I know about actresses. They ain't reliable. Now, there's plenty of women for you around here got sense enough to keep their mouths shut when you don't. All right. I'm going back to Tombstone now. Never did see a whole man you could buy. Always turns out to be not more than half a man. Good deal. much like San Francisco, does it? No. But it has a sort of frightening beauty about it. It looks like the landscape on a star. <laughs> I think you should write a piece for Mr. Clum's newspaper. Maybe I will. with Arizona? No, not exactly. Why do you stay here? Because I have a job to do. Aren't there other men who could do it? Oh, sure. There are lots of them, but I... Uh, well, I started it, and I can't quit now. Like, um, not deserting in the face of the enemy? <laughs> Something like that. Now, I was thinking... My folks own a, well, a very large construction company in San Francisco. They could give you a much better position there than you have here. Why would they do that? They want me to quit the stage. I couldn't make a deal. Well, you wouldn't have to fall in love with me. I, I would just hint to the family that you might. Your family that desperate? Yes. <laughs> but they wouldn't have to be, after they met you. I think it's time we'd better be going. I'd got to uh, go on patrol at 3 o'clock. What's the matter? Look, I, uh, just wouldn't exactly make good husband material. Why? Because I'm just a John Law and makes $150 a month. I can't get any life insurance. All the agents tell me I'm a bad risk. And it's true. Does that mean you could never fall in love with me? No. I'm trying to say that I think you ought to forget about this. And if I don't? You will. I don't think so. This is all my fault, and I'm sorry. You were worried about being, and I took advantage of that. I tried to make him jealous, and that was wrong. I wish you'd stop imagining things about us. You're an intelligent girl. You should know better. Yes, sir. You go on back to San Francisco. Fall in love with somebody that has something to offer. They dig a new grave for me every week. I can't leave, and if I don't, I'll wind up in Boot Hill. Are you back in your right mind? Mm-hmm. Marry me? <laughs> you get up in that bucket. <laughs> Not now, later, please. Right now. You and Earp have me in serious trouble. 
We have. Yes, I talked too much and I was overheard. Old man Clanton threatened me. But I'm all right with Clanton now, as long as you don't talk to Herb. Clanton thinks Herb's pumping you for information. Wyatt knew all about you already. You told him what I said? Miss Marlin on stage. I've got to go. I suggest you talk to Wyatt. He doesn't seem to be afraid of Mr. Clanton. But, Miss Marlin, will you listen to I'm me? I'm sorry. Talk. I'm in bed with old man Clan. Good. Wait a minute. You want to see Miss Marlin get hurt? How could she get hurt? Because I talk too much. Nothing important, but old man Clan may get the idea that I told her more than I really did, and he might think she's repeating it to you. He doesn't make war on women, Johnny. He could this time. Herp, I'm asking you to stay away from her. You couldn't be jealous now, could you? I knew you were going to say that. But I'm only thinking about Miss Marlin. And if you had any real feelings, you'd persuade her to leave town. Look, Herb, I'm asking you this one time. You've got to believe me. I'll have a talk with her. Thanks. right, boss. Herb's taking her away from Johnny. Mm-hmm. Well, I made up my mind that gal's real dangerous. She'll tell her up everything she knows. What are you gonna do? Are we gonna kill her? Oh, sure. I never had to kill no women yet. No, no, we'll just fix it so as nobody will believe what she says. Look at that other room, may I? Go ahead. I have a weakness for melodrama. I don't like that balcony window in there. You're too close to the back stairs. Why don't you change quarters? Oh, now, really, what? Am I going to be a victim of a murder or something? Ian's telling the truth for the first time in his life. He can't afford to take chances. All right. Then why don't you stay here and guard me? In here? No. People will talk, hmm? They certainly would. <laughs> Look, there's nothing funny about this. Clanton's got hangers on all over town. Now, you know how to handle a gun? Oh, I've shot many villains with blank cartridges. You take this. Keep your doors and windows locked. I'll be back in about an hour. One of your very own 45s, I'll sleep with it under my pillow. Look, we can't afford to take chances now. I'll be back by 1 a.m. You stay in that bedroom. When you come back here, will you stay? Yes. Outside. You lock the door behind me. Mr. Gibbs, you watch the front of the hotel. When we leave and head for the theater, you follow and post yourself there. I don't know when or where Mr. Clanton will try to get at her, but we'll put McMaster's on the north patrol and put uh, Daggett on the south side. Wyatt, where's your other gun? I'll tell you about that later. Come on.
Hey, you folks go about your business. Get along with you. Do you have any idea who he is? I never saw him before. I was dozing in the bedroom and I heard sounds. Well, it sure looks mighty peculiar to me, Wyatt. That there little old play acting dagger ain't hardly strong enough. There's blood spots leading from the hall door, too. I know it. Well, I'll go get Doc Goodfeller. Go and get dressed. Am I arrested? No. Another hotel with Mr. Gibbs on guard is the place for you. Now, you know the dead man, you know who murdered him. Let's have some honest talking, Johnny. All right, will you make the arrest? Will old man Clanton kill me? No, he won't. He needs you too much. Of course, we could have Miss Minna stand trial and be charged with murder. I think a lot more of her than you do. All right, then you play the big hero. Let's get Mr. Gibbs in a ride. Hold it. Limpy Davis and his boys are right around that rock in a draw. I'm waiting for Clanton to pay him off. Let's go on in. No, wait a minute. Now, I better go in first. They know me and they won't be expecting trouble. Johnny could double cross us, one. We'll have our guns on him. After you, Sheriff. It's only been. Well, boys, did you bring our money? No, I'm going to arrest you. This is a joke. Why, you double crossing Judas? Hold it! Throw him down! Limpy think he was dying. Oh, I got a confession. Limpy stabbed that saddle tramp with his knife. Then they hired Limpy's boys to put the body in your hotel suite. Then the prop dagger didn't kill him? No. But who stole it from our trunks in the birdcage? Simple. Your doorman. They bribed him to do it. Then they switched knives and used the prop dagger to incriminate you. It's amazing, Mr. Bean. Without you, I would have been tried for this frame-up. I'm ever so grateful. <laughs> Not at all. The next time I'm in San Francisco, I uh, hope to call on you. The stage will stop right outside for you, Miss Minna. Thank you, Marshal. Uh, would you excuse us, Mr. Bean? No. Oh. Goodbye. No, Bean really did solve the murder. You ought to... You ought to go back to San Francisco and forget that all of this ever happened. I won't forget, Marshal. All aboard. All aboard. Hey, Marshal Lurk. She'll be right out. Country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be
story, and long may his story be told. The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. In the 1880s, there were many bandit gangs who plundered the Southwest. And among them were the very successful bank robbers called the Holocaust. Five cunning killers who disguised themselves as clowns to conceal their identity. A device which enabled them to elude some of the most famous law officers of the West. Stand back. What kind of get up that? It's one of the Harlequins. You've heard of them before. A Harlequin? You mean them bank robbers? That's right. Let's see what he looks like. A Harlequin, huh? What might your real name be? Oh, you needn't be asking me that for I'll never tell you. Doesn't matter. All we have to know is that he's a harlequin. Get him over to Dr. Goodfellow. I haven't patched him up. I'm going to follow those others. You'll find the harlequins. It's a dead marshal you are. Meaning no disrespect to yourself, of course. Thanks for the warning. All right, give me a hand with Mr. Funny Face here. Doing here? Why'd you make a stop? I'll tell you later. Joe, put the horse in that abandoned mine shell. Give me that money you're carrying. Well, we're in the clear now. We're out of sight in this shack. Want to get me some sleep before we head on back to Tombstone? Back? Well, now, that's a real brilliant idea. What about the money? We gonna take that back, too? No, we're not gonna take that back, too. We'll hide it under the floor, that is, unless you've got a better idea. No, I didn't mean to make you sore. Well, start getting out of that rig. Well, just the same, Tex. It ain't smart going back there. We've been together two years. Two years we had our agreement. One of us gets caught, the rest gets him out. Now, it's plain and simple. You all agreed to it, and there'll be no backing out now. Look at it, sensible Tex. Nobody knows us. We don't need Casey anymore. That's right. We disappear and live like kings somewhere. Now, you boys is uh, overlooking just one little thing. Casey knows who we are. Oh, he wouldn't tell nothing. No. Well, he'll be real quiet till we come get him. But the day he figures we're long gone, that's the day when everybody finds out who we are. Now, you savvy? You know he's right. Tax, do you think we lost that, Marshal? Hmm. Even Indian trackers they have a hard time following that trail in them rocks we come through. Well, you and get started on that floor. And don't mark up the wood. Well, Mr. Mayor, what am I going to do? I can't give those people their money, not all of them. You've got enough on hand to pay out some, haven't you? Sure, but that 50000 last night, I can't replace it. No bank could. Well, you, uh, you try to keep them satisfied until Wyatt gets back. Maybe he's had some luck. It's gonna be easy getting Casey out of that jail. Well, Marshall's gotta go to bed sometimes, and he sleeps at the hotel. Oh, and Newt, uh, you let me worry about it, huh? You just do what you're told, same as always. Yeah, let Tex worry about it. He and Casey's smart. I wish Casey's here now. <laughs> so does he, Tim. Tombstone will be full of cowboys just, just like we are. And we go in same as anybody. When the time's right, we move on to jail. Right?
see you. Did you have any luck? Yep, all bad. Tracked in the rock country, lost the trail. Went beyond the brush country, still couldn't find it. Well, through this whole town's in uproar. Everybody's scared to death, they ain't gonna get their money. Well, it appears to me we're gonna have to take out a posse just to cool things down, Mike. Whether we catch them fellers or not. Well, I got a hunch the Harlequins are gonna come back to Tombstone. Come back for what? Him, I gotta get him out. <laughs> With $50,000 to divide between them, they're clean across the border by now or traveling first class to New York. They're too smart to leave him behind. They've never been caught and they've never been identified. All they have to do is to drift into Tombstone without their costumes and take the chances. We won't know who they are or where they are until it happens. Well, sir, if you're right, we got a whopping job on our hands. We've got one advantage, Mr. Gibbs. They gotta come in here to get at him. Ah, lad. So you didn't catch me Harlequin boys after all. That's a pity now you had that massive long ride all for nothing. Well, I'm any pity is yours, not mine. Oh, you can smile, but you're a liability to the Harlequins now that your face is known. It's a clever fellow you are, Marshal Wyatt Earp, but you don't know it all. You see, my secret lies in the other things, Abby. Such as keeping your mouth shut. Well, if the boys think that you won't talk, I can just let you stay here in jail and keep the money. Or kill you right in here, just to keep you from squealing on them. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. I'm not frightened at all. No? Well, try this one out. When you stand trial, the record of the Harlequins will put you in prison for the rest of your life. Even if we don't know what your name is. And you'll never get me to trial. You have my promise on that. I wouldn't count on breaking out of here if I were you. Your friends will never get you out of my jail. And I give you my promise on that. Well, I'll be watching to see how you go about capturing the Harlequin boys. Oh, you're a bright one for certain. Good day to you, Marshal. What do you say? Nothing. He's waiting for a jailbreak. You gonna put on extra deputies? Um, uh, just uh, scare him off. He's too heavy a guard. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, he sure talks with a brogue, don't he? And why would you be saying that, lad? Oh, it is a pity to be finding myself in jail, it is. There, now, be a good lad and unlock the door for me. <laughs> Burn my hide. You take him off better than he does himself. You know why? It's you ought to have been one of them play actor fellas. That's darn good imitating. What? How'd you make out? I lost the trail. Mm -hmm. Well, can you come down to the bank right away? Mr. Stacy says unless something's done, why, he's going to go bankrupt. I don't know what I could do. Well, at least you could talk to the man. I'll not be long, lad. Keep your eyes peeled and your gun ready. Oh, get along out of here, will you? <laughs> what's, uh, what's that all about? Huh? Well, just imitating our prisoner in What's this I hear about the bank being robbed, cleaned out by a bunch of clowns? Oh, you heard right, Mr. Clanton. You trying to say it wasn't your outfit? Hush up. Every time anything happens around here, you think it's me. I run a big business, and my boys got plenty to do without messing around trying to rob banks. You done anything about finding that money? Is your vigilantes doing anything to help? Now, you look... Now, you seem awful interested in law enforcement all of a sudden. How come? Gee, host of fat, I got money in the place, that's why. And I'm getting it out right pronto. Then I'm going over to that Arizona bank and do the exact same thing. I ain't waiting for it to get robbed. Clanton, you got any idea what would happen if everybody does that? The banks would go broke and people will lose their money. You're wasting your breath. Mr. Clanton doesn't care what happens to other people. Well, now, I care enough to give you a piece of advice. You catch them, fellas, or I'll see you fired right out from under that star you're strutting. Ain't no clowns gonna make a fool out of me. So Emperor Clanton doesn't like outsiders pulling jobs in town. Now, that's too bad. Never mind. 
You just start being a John Law, Sonny, or take the consequences. How about that? Clanton acting like an honest, righteous, outraged citizen. Well, he's outraged, all right. But he did give me an idea. You uh, tell Mr. Stacy I'll see him later. Where are you going? Tell you when I get back. Mr. Borden, all I'm asking you to do is to loan some of your bank's cash to the Tombstone Bank. You'll get it back, sir. I don't see any reason for helping a competitor, Marshal. It's his own fault that he was robbed. Pure carelessness. He takes the same precautions you do, sir. And that's beside the point. I'm sorry. I can't agree. Why, if people found out what I was doing, there'd be a run on my bank. Sir, if I could guarantee that nobody would find out about it, would you do it? Why should I? Because if the Tombstone Bank goes broke, there'll be a financial panic that would ruin everybody. Do you want that? Why, no, of course not. Then do as I ask you, sir. We could make the transfer of the money sometime after midnight. Mm, all right. Meet me at 2 o'clock. Thank you, sir. I'll be here. All right, now I want one of you boys just went to all the time. Don't take your eyes off the jail. Anybody comes out, anybody goes in. I want to know about it. All right. I went back and got me a real good look at that jail. <laughs> it ain't going to be hard at all. We'll just uh, wait till the marshal leaves, the deputy goes on patrol, and uh, shoo, Casey's out. <laughs> all right, let's deal the cards. See how it's running tonight. Nothing happened? Nothing except I'm getting darn hungry. Well, go get yourself some chow. Get something for the prisoner, too. He'll be around here a while. The only thing I hate is sitting around and waiting for something to happen. I'd rather be in a shootout. Well, maybe we can help it along. Well, I sure hope so, because I just ain't cut out for this. Tex, that big deputy just left. Marshal, stay inside? Yeah. Keep watching. I will do that. I'd like to. Well, Mr. Mayor. What? Well, I checked the Cosmopolitan Hotel like you asked me to. Four men registered in today. They're, uh, they're in a room overlooking the jail. Fine. Next, you ask Mr. Stacy to close up the bank regular hours, post an announcement that he will be paying withdrawals again tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. Why he can't do that? He won't have the currency. He'll have enough by morning. Not the hold-up money, but he'll have a, enough from another source. All right. Now, tell him. You know, uh, Wyatt, you aren't sticking your neck out, are you? 
Yeah, way out. Out to here. But I thank you for asking. Vigilante's ready? Well, I got four picked men. They're gonna meet me in exactly 13 minutes. Oh, uh, Taylor brought those packages for you, Wayne. I told you where I lost the trail of those Heiligans. Yeah. You have your men stay out of sight. Don't worry. We'll do our job. You just take care of yourself, boy. Yeah. Mm. What you got there, a new suit? Here, put these on. Put it on? What for? I can't wear your clothes. They're not mine. They're your size. Taylor's been working all day trying to get them ready for you. Well, you you going to tell me the scheme or you going to let me guess? I want you to dress up like me. Go out the front, pretend like you're heading for my hotel. But you cut around come in the rear door. Put your own clothes on, then pretend to go on patrol. Well, what are you going to be doing if you can't go? Faith and I'll be getting rid of our clown the while. We'll put the dear lad out and me in his cell. Yeah, I see. That's a pretty tricky idea, what? Yeah, there's one part of this I haven't told you yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't warn me about not shooting nobody. I ain't gonna shoot less than I have to. No. We're gonna let him get the man. I mean, I'll be in Casey's clothes. Oh, no, you ain't. You'll get yourself killed, so you can just forget about that right now. That's the only way I can find out where the money's hidden. There ain't no bank worth getting yourself killed over. We'll capture them when they come in here, and that's enough right there. You and the vigilantes will be following me, Mr. Gibbs. Yeah? How far back? Just far enough so we can't hear the horses. Quiet, if you get yourself killed and I help you do it, I'll never get over it. I won't get killed. And now put on your new clothes, there's the lad. And be trusting me the once. Yeah. All right. Ain't my style. Marshal just left, Tex. Deputy still there? Yeah. Keep watching. Good. I'll get your own outfit on and get back here as soon as you can. You go down the back way. Get the horses. Take them to the alley behind the jail. You got that? Yeah. All right. Get your tote bag. Go get them. You give Newt two minutes, then follow him down the back way. You go out the front, I'll follow you in two minutes. Now cut around behind the jail quick as you can and wait for me. All right, go get him. How's it now, lad? You'd never know it was me own dear self, now, would you? I sure would. You better get in that cell while you still got time. Don't wait too long to follow me. still got that rig on. Then what do you think I'd be wearing this night? I've been expecting you some time I have. I don't get sore. Sorry we took so long, but he couldn't be helped. 
Are you hurt? My arms, there's only a scratch. Come on. Saddlebags. We got the money in that check, Casey, and it's hit real good. You did the right thing, my boy. We'll be getting it, then going our way. being followed, Casey. They probably don't even know you're gone yet. Ain't you gonna get out of that rig? We ain't got all day. Yeah, Casey, how come you haven't took off your mask? Just not a ghost you're seeing, lads. Marshal Air Tombstone, you're under arrest. Hold it. Reach. You all right, White? Yeah. Mr. Gibbs, put the handcuffs on him. All right, boys, put some iron on them. You and the vigilantes take them on back to town. Mr. Clement and I will take the money. Well, the bank's sure going to be glad to see you, Wayne. All I want out of this is to see Mr. Clanton's face when he hears we caught those no-good clowns. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be told. You have to slow down, Holiday. I'll be all right in the morning. No, you won't be all right in the morning. You've got to have at least two weeks of complete rest. And I want you to stop drinking immediately. Why don't you just have me buried? Never mind the sarcasm. I still plan to live until I die. Come on, Wyatt. You ought to go to sleep now. I'll see you in the morning, Doc. That was a bad one, Wyatt. If he keeps on at this rate, I wouldn't give you a nickel for his chances. Maybe you can make him see it. I tried as hard as you have. He's stubborn. Well, at least get him to stop drinking so much. I'll do what I can, Doc.
Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Dr. John H. Holliday was Wyatt Earp's friend. As Wyatt was to say in later years, Doc was a dentist whom lung disease made a frontier vagabond, a philosopher whom life had made a caustic wit. At the same time, the nerviest, speediest, deadliest man with a six gun I ever knew. But this friendship was also a burden to the Marshal of Tombstone. Where you want this? I'll put it on the table. Anybody see you? Nope. Come by the aisles and the back stairs. Boy, this stuff sure is heavy. You want the rest of it up here? No. What does that label say? It's a standard 100 proof bottled in bond. Just like you ordered, Wyatt. Ain't nothing to show the proof's been cut in half, neither. Appears to be a neat job. Yeah, that's perfect. Think it'll work? Well, it's gotta work. Doc hasn't cut down on his drinking at all. At least that water stuff will cut him in half. Yeah, but what if he starts drinking twice as much of this here stuff? <laughs> that's impossible. What if he switches brands? Yeah, don't worry, Doc won't switch brands. No, sir, Doc would rather be caught dead than drink any of the brand that. Go on, distribute this stuff to the barkeeps down the street. All right, sir. I don't think it's going to work, though. Well, shotgun, we got to do something. Now, you heard what Dr. Goodfellow said, didn't you? Yeah, he said it was bad, all right. If it wasn't, I wouldn't pull something like this, sir, if I could think of another way. Now, you go on, take it down the street. Poor Doc. Hi, Doc. Greetings, Hogan. Use them? Yes. What kind of lick is this? Tastes like soda pop. Let's try another bottle. Yes, sir. What's wrong with it? I don't know. You try some. Yes, sir. Strong? Like a mule. I've been drinking this brand for 20 years. It's either a spoil mash or it's been cut. Cut? It's a hard proof, Doc. You broke the seal yourself. I'm not accusing you, Hogan. We're confronted with a mystery. And I'm gonna solve it. She's gonna die real soon. Well, now, maybe that's good. Good? Mr. Gibbs, we should all live as if we're gonna die real soon. In this business, it could happen. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, but it's awful bad on a man like Doc, ain't it? Um, drinking that much is awful bad, too. Yeah. Well, he ain't drinking now. Doc never did believe that he could really die someday. That's been his trouble all along. Now, maybe he'll take better care of himself. Won't be so eager to rush into gunfights. 
I don't know about that, Wyatt. Seems to me it could go the other way. You see, I'm right. This will settle him down. Yeah, I hope so. But I ain't as sure as you are. Come in. They're paying up, Doc. The word got around good. I know it would. How much this time, Hogan? About 1500 sir. You count it. Man is a foolish animal, Hogan. He exaggerates the value of his own life. All the gamblers who owe me put together aren't worth $1,500. Would you put up $1,500 to help them? <laughs> I ain't a good lord, Doc. I wouldn't know. That's the best proof there is a lord. His divine tolerance. He allows men free will to go to the devil as they choose. Yes, sir. Tom and Frank McLaurie in town. Oh? Well, at the bird cage. Good. Any other Clanton men with them? No, sir. Just Tom and Frank. Them is top guns. Ain't they enough? No. I like Ringo and Brocious, too. It's a good deed I could do before I go. Yes, sir. You gotta excuse me, Doc. I gotta get back to my job. Doc Holliday's drinks turned on him. Yeah, he can't get no kick out of it at all anymore. Doc's pickled in alcohol, that's why. <laughs> like a horse with too much oats. He founders himself. You gentlemen discussing me? Hello, Doc. Whole town's talking about your drinks turning on you, Doc. Why don't you change your brand? And where are your gun belts? We left them on our saddles. Good. You'll die in fresh air. We got nothing against you, Doc. Where's White Earth? Does he figure to bushwhack us out in the street? Why, it's not around. Outside. Doc? Move. be pretty bad off or else he wouldn't take the two of us on without Herb to back him. What's the use of maybe one of us dying just to get Doc? We can't run. Come on. Get your gun belts fastened. What's your hurry? No. We ain't fighting Doc. Get on your horse. Well, they'll think we're scared. Let him think. He's gonna die soon anyway. Herb's the one we want, and we'll pick our own time. No fight, Doc. Easy. Tom and Frank McLeod. You pick the fight, Doc? Mr. Gibbs, happens to be my business. No, it happens to be mine. Really, Deacon? You're my deputy. Were the McLowrys breaking the law? Not at the moment. Let's not argue on the street. Yeah, you come on along, Doc. You ain't feeling too good. According to the law, according to the law, what does the law care about you? I've seen you risk your life at least 50 times, arresting hoodlums when you should have shot them. Do you know where you are? You're in Tombstone, Arizona. You're surrounded by a gang of hoodlums you haven't even made a dent in and a crooked sheriff. Don't preach to me about the law. When Sheriff Bean is ready to have you murdered some night, the law won't even give you a decent burial. Well, that may be true. But I don't need you to make things worse than they already are. 
You know, I thought that you might have learned something. Learn what? An officer either believes in the law or he turns in his star. I've learned that. You know what? You should have been a judge back east somewhere. You don't belong out here. You, uh, you really want to quit? Yes, I do. We've uh, been friends a long time. Friends? <laughs> Your moral rectitude was amusing. And I admire courage. But I've learned yours is a false courage. And I'd be a bigger fool if I were to help you walk into an open grave. Doc, you're a sick man, otherwise you wouldn't pick a fight. You're just not yourself. I am myself. But from now on, you and I are strangers. Hi, Doc. Is this some kind of play acting, Herb? What? You mean you and Doc really meant that? You heard what he said? Well, what do you want? I couldn't help but overhear uh, what you said to Herb, Doc. Sounds like you. Slew down enough. You never did belong with him. Why don't you throw in with me? What's the deal? More money than you ever won gambling. Oh? Wells Fargo is shipping about $100,000 into Tombstone. Dick Gertz sold part of his mining property, and he's asking for half the payment in cash. Hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Ought to be my cut. Oh, uh, thirty thousand. <laughs> fifty thousand. Fifth. All right, Doc. Fifty. What am I supposed to do the whole job single-handed? No, you just find out when Wells Fargo is bringing that hundred thousand dollars into Tombstone. Thacker doesn't know you quit as Herb's deputy. If you move along real fast, all you have to do is ask him. Maybe. Who's going to make the heist? Three good men. And nobody knows who they are but me, Doc. Well, I've been considering visiting the bars over at Charleston and Galeyville. Some of those boys owe me money. You can go there afterwards. Here, have a drink while you're thinking it over. Your own brand, too. I'll accept your business proposition. But don't get the idea that we're friends. I wouldn't drink your whiskey even if it tasted good. Well, that was a fool notion. Now that Doc thinks he's gonna die, he's more reckless than ever. I have to tell him about the whiskey before he gets himself shot. Holiday's turned in his badge and quit you. I know how you must feel. He's just not himself. I never understood it, but just the same. When he has enough liquor, it steadies him down. This way he's going to get himself killed. I'm going to tell him I cut his whiskey in half. Quiet. Shotgun, have you seen Doc? Rode out of town. Rode out? Which way? Headed for Charleston, I reckon. What? You and Doc argue about them McLaurys? No, he turned in his star. I'm afraid of what he's going to do next. You were right. I'm going to tell him the truth when he gets back. Tell him it was all my doing and that I want to apologize. <laughs> Howdy, 
Yes, I got. Hello, Doc. Hey, you look tired. I am. Did you rest yourself? Thank you. Why, it's been overworking you, huh? As usual. Uh, Thacker, is there anything that the deacon ought to know? Yes, there is. I meant to tell Wyatt as soon as I cleaned up the paperwork. Then, uh, why don't you give it to me? Maybe Wyatt will let me go to bed. Sure, Doc. Bringing in quite a bit of cash on the midnight stage. I figure that Wyatt and a couple of deputies ought to be around. Yes, I should think so. Come in. Evening, Doctor. What is it, Hogan? I have some house calls that won't wait long. This from Doc Holliday. Some money, insurance policy, and some other stuff. Hear from this that Holiday wants to start a new hospital in memory of Wyatt Earp to bear his name. Why in memory? Doc never said nothing to me, just asked me to talk this over to you. Hands off. Should do it. Sonny. Take this over the jail. Give it a wide up. Nobody else. Here, this is for you. And remember, get out of there right away before he can question you. The Wyatt Earp Memorial Hospital. And all his money. I don't like the looks of it, Wyatt. Holiday's a violent man. He could be involved in something desperate himself. Or maybe he heard of a plot against your life. You know, something's happened. You got to find him, Wyatt. I've tried. Mr. Gibbs and three other deputies are looking for him now. They'll find him. Hey, hold on. Huh. What was that all about? I don't know. It's from Doc. Well, he's going after Johnny B and his final gesture to me. Well, it's Fargo office, midnight. B and job. Try to take men alive, three of them. I don't understand it. Well, you never did understand, Doc. Today he tried to gun the McLowry's for me. Now he's going to double cross Johnny B and for me. He wants to give everything he has to me. Is there that much good in Holiday? According to his lights, yes. When Bean finds out about this, there's bound to be a gunfight. And if Bean gets lucky, Doc could be dead instead of our crooked sheriff. Now, I've got to find Gibbs and get over to the Wells Fargo office. Short in time, excuse me. Where's Irfan Gibbs? Looking for Doc Holliday. All you have to worry about is that stage guard and Thacker. Right. Where are you going to be? I'll be at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Now, this is an easy one. Grab that Wells Fargo box and take off. There's only three horses in the alley. Yeah, that's right. You couldn't spot them in? If Ben schemed it, they'll drift along on foot when a stage pulls in. All right, I'm going to move into the alley. You stay here and wait until the stage stops. Remember, I want him alive. All right, sir.
Good work, boys. Look out! All right, drop it. Get back over there. You won't get hurt. All right, boys, let's get out of here. Kill them, Wyatt. I ain't killed him. Thanks, Wyatt. You and Mr. Gibbs get them on over to the jail. Patch them up. And they're still trying to find Doc. Get inside, all of them. Come on, move along. Doc! Now, where are you being? Later, Gibbs. This is Sheriff Bean. You ever seen him before? No, never. You lie. He hired you and the rest of you hoodlums. I tip Bean off myself. That's how I know. That's mighty interesting. Oh, don't pay no attention to Doc. He's, he's sober. All right. Boys, step right inside here. Get along. I warned you, Doc, and I told her. You kill me and you're both hanged. I wouldn't shoot you in cold blood. No. And neither will you. Oh, yes, I would, Johnny. I have but a few days left. And I might just as well die on the gallows as in bed. Don't try to pray. Just start cussing. Be an honest son of the devil. No, Doc. You can't do it, Doc. No, no don't, Doc. Is that the way you want to take it? Like a sick dog? Get out of here. Here, try some of this. You, uh, you were drinking so much, I uh, watered your whiskey to keep you from killing yourself with it. That was a sadistic thing to do to me. Tell me, Deacon. When did you come to your senses? All right, Doc. You win this time, but I haven't given up on you yet. Some people never know when they're well off. You know, Wyatt, greater love hath no man than that he giveth 100 proof to his best friend. up the country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his be told. Long may his